I'm here with Irene and Eleanor from the National Centre for Atmospheric Science, and they are on a mission on the aircraft that you see behind me, which I recognise as a BA-146 Whisper Jet. I wonder if you could tell me a little bit more about your mission. This is a BA-146, but it's a very unique 146. Um, it's been converted for atmospheric research. So we take the aircraft up into the atmosphere. It has a full laboratory on board, and we can measure just about anything in the atmosphere, so weather, pollution, particles, clouds, everything like that. It's had extra reinforcements in the cabin, we've got more fuel. The interior has been completely ripped out and we have a laboratory on board. It carries scientific equipment instead of seats. We're hoping to actually be able to use SAF during our home-based flying. We're approved to use a blend of up to 50% SAF. I think it cuts our carbon emissions by around a third. It's still a large jet aircraft, it's still got four engines. We are doing environmental science with it, but we're working very hard to try and you know manage, manage our emissions around that and you've got electric ground equipment as well to support it. Uh, we're lowering emissions where we can. Obviously the aircraft has its flight systems, but it's also got a lot of science equipment and that does use a lot of power. Irene, can you talk to me about the scientific mission? What are the experiments that are going on inside the aircraft? Over the years, there's been a lot of different, of different science campaigns that have taken place. And inside the aircraft, the cabin inside is modular. So we've got a series of core measurements, for example, the chemistry rug. We measure all sorts of trace gases, such as CO2, methane, SO2, CO, and water. We not only have our rugs, but also other universities can bring their own rugs. So someone has an idea and wants to measure something and they know how to measure it and want to build a rug for it to measure whatever they want to measure, they can do that. We can bring them over, have it on the aircraft and serve all sorts of t different scientific missions. We've sampled, for example, volcanoes with the bigger option happened when it happened in Iceland in 2010. We were able to, for example, measure ash clouds and see where they were and for aircraft traffic then to be able to be reopened. We've also, for example, measured methane in wetlands. We've measured Saharan dust, anything that can be measured in the atmosphere and it's been used for all sorts of missions. Are you involved in the mission to understand contrails? There is a campaign in the works to look at uh, contrails and basically it's sort of tail sniffing. You know, we might do it with another aircraft, we might just do it with our own contrails and we'll just fly around and pick up and look at, you know, look at characterising those contrails and seeing, you know, what we can understand more about them. Contrails is a particularly pertinent topic in the field of sustainable aviation right now because people are starting to understand that it has a particular impact on the emissions from aircraft and if you're able to get involved in that aspect of the research, that's that's going to be vital. The data we collect is all freely available. Um, you know, it's, it's data that goes into the Centre for Environmental Data Archive. It can be used in, you know, in studies 10 years down the line. It can be used retroactively. That data can then be used for years afterwards. Eleanor, any particular discoveries that have particularly piqued your interest with regard to the research that's been done? I love some of the, you know, the emergency response stuff we've done, like Irene was saying, with the volcanic gases. And more recently, actually, we're working with the Met Office it's called the Wessex Convection Experiment. Last summer, we were out flying all over sort of the southwest, um, looking at the the formation of summer storm clouds so they're hoping to use that to um, actually really you know, improve weather forecasts not only does climate change affect how these clouds are forming it also the clouds themselves then also affect the climate you know in the local area by going out and looking at how these clouds are forming what what conditions they're forming in it might give us a whole new understanding of you know the impacts of climate change well it's a fantastically important mission and thanks so much and uh, Irene for taking the time to talk to me today thank you what you've got is a science lab, but in the fuselage of what was a commercial airliner. Um, so here we have an aerosol rack. This picks up um, basically particulate matter, so sea salt, pollen, dark things. It all comes in through the inlet, picked up in these in uh, filters in these housings, and then yeah, we take off to a lab for analysis. So this is the chemistry rack. Um, we measure different trace gases. Um, this one's is actually not fitted now, but it measures CO2, methane, and water. We've got CO over here, SO2, and ozone over there. And all of this is basically the car that controls all the, car, the valves and the tubes that go inside here. You can also see some gas cylinders at the top. These uh, instruments are normally not made for, to go on aircraft, so sometimes right. we need to open them, modify them, make them really fast, and make sure they're actually calibrated. Um, so our flight manager will sit here and they'll control all the science that's happening on the aircraft. This is a short clip from 
out of the window of a flight. This was a project by the University of Reading to characterise a sting jet, which is a very, very violent type of uh, sudden storm that comes around a sort of like a scorpion tail that comes around after storms. So, weather balloons, there you go, this is a drop sun. So, so you have a weather balloon which goes up, takes weather data, balloon bursts, it comes down. The drop sun is it's just the downward bit, it's just falling, it has a parachute. Um, it's loaded up into the tube and then it sends back via VHF a, uh, a you know, profile of what it's falling through.